Hi, my name is Vicky Flores, and today I will be discussing the reasons for OPEC's oil embargo and how it has impacted oil prices for the global economy and why it is still relevant today. So, on October 6, 1973, the Yom Kippur War, also known as the 1973 Arab-Israeli War, began and was a war fought by the coalition of Arab states led by Egypt and Syria against Israel. Because of the United States' massive aid, Israel defeated its enemies, which pushed OPEC, the organization of the petroleum exporting countries, to retaliate through an embargo. Essentially, the embargo was a response to the U.S. decision to resupply Israel with arms after the start of the war. This meant that Arab countries limited the sale of oil to the U.S., which in turn caused a spike in oil prices and shortages of oil in the United States. This embargo highlighted the U.S. dependence on the Middle East. In 1973, Saudi Arabia was the fourth largest supplier of oil to the U.S. America had become over-dependent on cheap energy, careless about rising gasoline consumption, and unconcerned about a decline in domestic oil exploration. The oil embargo had countless effects on the U.S. economy. In 1973, oil sold for $3.89 a barrel, which is scarcely more than the average price of a gallon of gas today. Oil prices tripled, lines formed at gas stations that had limited hours and often ran out of gas, and at the peak of the embargo, prices shot up to $1.2 a gallon. Heating prices rose from $0.17 to $0.38 cents a gallon in one day. The embargo crippled the world's economy with inflation. People say that everything went up, but paychecks did not. An upward trend in the average annual price of oil did not end until it reached a record $35.18 a barrel in 1981 during a domestic drilling boom after Iran shut down oil exports to the U.S. for several weeks in 1979. Even after the Arab countries lifted the oil embargo on March 18, 1974, gasoline prices were up and did not return to earlier levels. So what does all of this mean today? Well, the U.S. has become an energy superpower, having the biggest producer of combined oil and natural gas. Crude oil production has increased by 50% since 2008, and the Energy Information Administration predicts that oil production could hit 8.4 million barrels a day by next year, nearly the same level as Saudi Arabia. The embargo helped launch a U.S. energy revolution. The U.S. had begun to force producers to find new ways to discover hydrocarbons and to embrace energy efficiency. Jimmy Carter and Gerald Ford reacted to the embargo's effect with automobile fuel efficiency standards and pledged to replace imported oil with domestic coal and gas. There were pleas for fewer Christmas lights, solar panels were implemented on the White House roof, and even today, Obama plans to nearly double the fuel efficiency of new cars and light trucks to 54 miles per gallon by 2025. If the Arab oil embargo were to happen today, the U.S. would have access to its own oil supply. America has come a long way since 1973, and I don't just mean the fashions and the sideburns. Oil can no longer be used as a weapon the way it was 40 years ago, but oil is still by far the dominant fuel, and until that changes and greener options become viable alternatives, we'll still be stuck in the 70s.